Hey everybody, welcome to the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI. And today's talk, what happened to additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing? We're going to answer that question right now. So previously I had a book on Amazon and one of the chapters was about 3D printing and we've done a number of videos on it. Why? Because you'll see right now. Thanks to ID Tech X for this update. 10 years ago, the 3D printing landscape was in the midst of its first big boom. With the 2009 expiration of a key Stratasys patent that covered thermoplastic filament extrusion technology, We'll talk more about that shortly. Desktop filament printers were taking off. I can remember going to see one of the first one of those at a trade show, and it was probably eight years ago now, about 2017. The general public was being introduced to the possibilities of 3D printing through countless eye-popping headlines that speculated on 3D printing's future application and everything from toys to phones to human organs. Ten years later, the 3D printing landscape has shifted dramatically, and we'll talk about that. While desktop filament printers are still the dominant printer type by volume, the value of professional and industrial level printers is taking up most of the focus. The company landscape and additive manufacturing, aka 3D printing, has also transformed with prior players merging or exiting and new players consistently emerging. This demonstrates the shifting nature of this technologically evolving industry. So one thing that my viewers know is that many of the modern rocket companies <laughs> like SpaceX and others print all or part of their rockets now with 3D printing. So there are, in addition to all the desktop printers, humongous scale 3D printers building very massive pieces of equipment. But what do all those printers have in common? One thing, they are low volume, one at a time printers. A desktop printer can print more than one at a time but it's no good for printing more than somewhere between 25 and, 50 and 100, depending on what the item being printed is. So they are not mass production technologies. For that reason, the goal of nearly every company in the 3D printing space has been to identify the mid and high volume applications that 3D printing could successfully serve. We're talking factory production here. Steadily, it appears that more and more of these applications are being identified. Whether they be sand casting cores for mass production electric vehicles or casings for smartphones. These types of applications often necessitate powder bed 3D printing technologies, which are better equipped to deal with the throughput requirements of high volume applications. Hence, ID TechX expects powder-based printing technologies to grow considerably over the next 10 years. With challenging macroeconomic conditions that have created a more conservative environment for raising capital and financial risk-taking, and I've done separate videos on how hard it is to raise venture capital right now. The importance of achieving profitability has never been so important for 3D printing companies of all sizes. And I've talked about that in videos about venture capital, that the key for all VC companies is to get to profitability as quickly as possible. Why? Then you don't need to raise more capital. You're self-sufficient. With such a fragmented market consisting of over 1,000 players in 3D printing hardware alone, that's a huge number and not sustainable. It is necessary for mergers, acquisitions, and exits to take place at an increasing pace. This is a normal part of the life cycle of a new industry. First comes the breakthrough, then hype, then it doesn't really work for mass applications, so you stop hearing about it for a while. In fact, that's exactly why 
haven't done a 3D printing episode in a while because it's been following this and through the trough. But now it's coming out as these new mass production techniques are developed. The conversation about sustainability in 3D printing is beginning to move beyond the simplest sustainability benefits that 3D printing offers, which is the reduction of waste material compared to subtractive manufacturing technologies. So my last company, not the one that I currently work at, we made industrial components, one of which was for the engines of airplanes, and it would take a block of material and cut the material away until we got the finished part. That is subtractive manufacturing, whereas 3D printing starts from nothing and builds the finished part, much less waste. Innovation will make recycled materials, including polymers, metals, and composites, much more suitable for both low and high performance applications. Now here's where we get to why I do segments on 3D printing. Increased incorporation of AI-driven software to run these 3D printers will help reduce other waste generating elements of additive manufacturing, such as supports and prints with defects. So AI does play and will continue to play a critical role in 3D printing. The inadequacies of current 3D printing materials are a well-known barrier to adoption for additive manufacturing, meaning that the existing materials do not work for all applications. The relatively limited materials portfolio of 3D printing has not yet gained the trust of many end users. This is for mass production. Not only is R&D effort being expended to reduce the deficiencies of 3D printing materials, that is improving existing materials, but many companies are also looking to create novel high performing materials to better suit the rigorous demands of many 3D printing application sectors. And I've done videos on the complete revolution in materials that's going on right now. The many innovative materials being explored for additive manufacturing from high entropy alloys to nanocarbon reinforced composites to non-oxide ceramics and more will not only increase 3D printing's materials portfolio, but will also expand 3D printing's capability for various applications in the long term. And parenthetically, where it said nanocarbon reinforced composites, that's the exact type of company I work for right now that's on the cutting edge of materials. So ID Tech X is great, but what does this all really mean? It means that 3D printing, following the traditional trajectory of brand new technologies, has moved through the hype cycle, through the trough, and is now about to enter the exponential phase. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means, and I've said this before. In the not too distant future, probably 10 years from now, most middle and higher income homes will have their own 3D printers in their home. Why? It will make clothes for you based on patterns you buy. It will make food for you. It will make alcoholic beverages for you. It will make non-alcoholic beverages for you. And it will do other things that haven't even really been developed yet. What I've just described already exists, but at very low quantity and the printers are not as cheap as they will be. So 3D printing is one of those AI enabled technologies that will become exponential partly because of AI and soon be ubiquitous, meaning everywhere. That's why I do videos on this. So thanks so much. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Also, please support us on Patreon. Five or ten bucks makes a huge difference to what we're doing here. Thanks so much. See you next time. Take care. Bye.